Hello, this is Javier Ruiz, partner at JKI. Today, I'm going to show you um, how to use our new JKI Network Streams Connection Library that you can find on VIPM. So to download it, uh, you can go, you can do it a couple of ways, but you can go to VIPM.io on your browser and then just type uh, Network Streams, for example. And then you're going to see the JKI Network Streams package. And from here, you can install it, and it will take you to the process of installing it on your computer via uh, the VIPM app. I already have it installed, so let me jump uh, to showing you how to use it. So um, I, have a, I have a simple project here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new VI on my desktop. And just to first show you what you will get with a package, you can see that under JKI Tools, you'll get the network streams um, palette. So these are all the all the VI that you need in order to use it. My recommendation would be uh, to start with the examples. The examples are the, one of one of the easiest way to understand um, easiest ways to understand how to use the, the library. So uh, let me open the two examples. So this one is a PC UI example. And this other one is uh, potentially what you will run on an RT target or uh, on the other endpoint. Uh, let me open this one. All right, so let me minimize this guy. So what you'll see is that you have two almost identical uh, VIs. One is meant to be one endpoint, in this case, a PC endpoint, for example. And this other one is supposed to be an RT endpoint. Uh, what I'm going to show you first is um, what's under the hood. Both both VIs look almost exactly the same on their on in on, on the block diagram. So you can see here that the first thing that we do is we create the bidirectional network stream. Uh, we provide the settings. So the settings in this case come from from these three items. So you have to provide your name. So basically in this case, this is the PC. Then who you're connecting to. In this case, we're gonna first try it with localhost. And then what's the name of the remote remote endpoint? Uh, we're gonna call it RT. Um, so you do that, you create it, and then the the logic that I have here is really simple but really powerful because it's gonna it's gonna reconnect it, reconnect itself if uh, if a uh, disconnection happens. So first, and uh, let me show you the the help. So basically, we're gonna check what's the status of the connection. Are we connected or not? Uh, if we are connected, then we're going to go into this case where we're going to check the send button. So if the send, but if the send button is not clicked, then we're not going to do anything. But if it is clicked, then we're going to send the message via this write message, uh, VI. And what you see the, the message is basically a cluster with a command, arguments, which is of type variant, and then a message ID. Um, the arguments can be anything. In this case, I have it as a string, but you literally can, can connect, you literally can connect anything that you want as long as it is a lab you type. Uh, the only thing I would stay away from is sending, uh, for example, IO data types, so, so say DACMX IO points or uh, even Visa directly, the Visa reference, uh, those, those could cause some issues. Uh, when you try to run them. But aside from that, it could be any any lab you native data type. All right, so we would send a message. In this case, I might decide to either wait or not uh, on the uh, on an acknowledgement from the other side. Um, this could be useful if you just, if you just want to know that the other side actually got the message, even if it doesn't reply with any new data. Um, I'm going to say false for now. Uh, the next step we're going to do is that we're going to read any messages that are available. So in this case, you see that this is an array of messages. And then we can do whatever we want with the messages. Uh, in this case, I'm just checking if the array is not empty, then I'm going to show you here what are the new messages that came in during that iteration. Um, this is where you would want to check potentially for what's the, what's the actual command that came in, say, uh, turn on pump or turn off pump. So you could check here and do something about it. Or my preferred way is if you want to actually reuse this code uh, and 
make it so that uh, this code actually sends the messages to another loop that is potentially processing uh, the, me the, the actual data and the messages, you could fire a user event from here to a separate loop that is in charge of taking action on the message. Um, then if you see if we follow the line, then after you decide to stop the loop or if there's an error, we're actually going to destroy the references. Um, right now I have the loop running every 100 milliseconds. Uh, and one thing important to see in the code is if we're not connected, what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect. So we explicitly call the disconnect method, which is going to make sure that there's no dangling references out there. Um, and then we're going to try to connect again. And I have separate timeouts for, for, for both. My suggestion on the timeout for connection is depending on how far away are your computers, um, you may need to play around with the timeout so that you give it enough time to try to connect. So let's see, let's see what this does. So this is the same code on both ends. Uh, this is the PC side. And if you look at the RP side, it's exactly the same. Um, I wanted to make it really simple, and then you can expand on it. So what, what you'll see on the RT uh, endpoint is that I only need to specify my name, which in that case is RT. I don't really need the IP address of the other end. Um, I just need to specify that on one of the ends. In this case, I already specified it on the PC endpoint. And then I'll specify the remote name. So now the remote name is going to be PC to match the other endpoint. All right, so let's see how it goes. So first I'm going to start the PC side. It doesn't really matter. Then I'm going to start the, the RT side. So you can see that both got the connected uh, indicator. So from this side, I'm going to send uh, a command. In this case, I'm just going to send this guy. So you can see that the RT side got it. In this case, we're on the same computer, so we're not really uh, sending messages over the network per se. Then maybe I want to send another one, another command. And then you can see that the, the RT side got it. Uh, now let's see from this side, I can send one. And now uh, the PC endpoint got the message. So that's pretty cool. And it works. Um, one of the nice things about the code that I just showed you is actually if I stop either endpoint, we're going to actually be able to reconnect without you doing anything else. So right now, the RT side, which is the one that is actually still running, told us it is disconnected. The minute I run the PC side again, boom, both are connected. And the same thing is going to be true for, for the other way around if I rerun this guy. So this is a really powerful way of just really easy, really easily having a bidirectional communication between two remote systems. So now let, let's actually test it to see if it works uh, when you have it in two separate targets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the RT main so that it is on the on, on, on a device that I have here. This is a Flex Rio controller, which is, um, it, it runs RT Linux. So it is very similar to a compact Rio running RT Linux. And I'm going to leave the PC UI on the computer side. So I'm going to open the PC UI and I'm going to open the RT main. So the code is exactly the same. The only thing with, that we need to know is from one endpoint, we need to know what the other, uh, the other IP address. So in this case, this is 169.254.7.242. All right. So now we're actually going to talk over the network to this VI running on RT Linux, in this case, a Flex Rear controller. So I'm going to run the PC UI, and now this guy on the RT side is deploying, deployed, and you see that both are connected. And again, the same thing holds true. I send a message from one end to the other. Uh, if this guy stops for some reason, he's going to be able to reconnect. And then this guy can also send a message, and the, and the UI is going to get it. So um, I built this library on top of the native LabVIEW network streams just because I was trying to replicate the same functionality all over and over again until I realized that this is a simple, really powerful way of communicating between remote systems. Um, you can open multiple instances uh, for a given application, which, with, which gives you a lot of flexibility. So try it out. Uh, let me know if you have any comments. If you go to vipm.io and find the specific package, you can post suggestions or comments there. 
uh, make, make sure to star it if you really like it. And hopefully you find it useful and we'll be, we'll be providing more features as, as we start hearing from people using it. So um, this is what I wanted to show you. Thanks again for, for watching.